This is a recast of the 4500 word piece, Non-Parametric Regression, from Schnippat AI. Let's listen in. Today we're diving into the world of non-parametric regression, a versatile approach in statistical analysis that distinguishes itself from its parametric counterpart by not assuming a predetermined form for the relationship between independent and dependent variables. This means that non-parametric regression is flexible and adaptable, allowing the shape of the relationship to be determined by the data itself. Unlike parametric methods, which rely on predefined models such as linear or polynomial regressions, non-parametric regression uses techniques like kernel smoothing, splines, or local regression to estimate the relationship between variables. These techniques allow the data to speak for itself, making non-parametric regression a powerful tool in exploratory data analysis and situations where the underlying data structure is unclear or highly variable. This flexibility and adaptability are what make non-parametric regression so important in statistical analysis. It's particularly useful in scenarios where traditional parametric models fail to capture the complexities or peculiarities of the data. Non-parametric regression can reveal trends and patterns that are not apparent under the constraints of parametric models. Non-parametric regression is especially pertinent in fields like finance, medicine, and environmental science, where the data can exhibit non-linear, discontinuous or irregular patterns. By offering a more nuanced and detailed understanding of the data, non-parametric methods enhance the accuracy of predictions and insights derived from statistical analysis. Now let's talk about how non-parametric regression differs from parametric regression. While both aim to model the relationship between variables, they have fundamental differences in their approach and application. Parametric regression assumes a specific form for the relationship, such as linear or polynomial, and is characterized by its simplicity and ease of interpretation. However, this simplicity can be a limitation when dealing with complex or irregular data. On the other hand, non-parametric regression does not assume any fixed structure, allowing for a more flexible and adaptable model. This flexibility can capture more complex relationships, but often at the cost of increased computational complexity and a more challenging interpretation. The choice between parametric and non-parametric regression depends on the nature of the data, the goals of the analysis, and the balance between simplicity and flexibility. Moving on to the historical context and development of non-parametric regression, it's interesting to note that the roots of non-parametric ideas can be traced back to the early 20th century. However, it wasn't until the mid-20th century that these methods started gaining prominence. The initial development was driven by the need for statistical techniques that could handle data without relying on strict assumptions about underlying distributions, which is often encountered in parametric methods. In the early stages, non-parametric methods were primarily focused on hypothesis testing and rank-based procedures. These techniques provided a foundation for handling data in a more flexible manner, setting the stage for the development of non-parametric regression methods. The advancement of computational power and the availability of larger datasets in the latter half of the 20th century further catalyzed the growth and application of non-parametric regression techniques. Several key figures have made significant contributions to the field of non-parametric regression. Frank Wilcoxon's work in the 1940s on rank sum tests laid early groundwork. John Tukey's exploration in the 1950s and 1960s, particularly his work on exploratory data analysis, provided valuable insights into data-driven approaches. Emmanuel Parzin introduced the concept of kernel density estimation in the 1960s, which became a fundamental technique in non-parametric regression. In the 1970s and 1980s, researchers like Grace Waba introduced spline models, which further enriched the repertoire of non-parametric methods. Additionally, Jerome Friedman and Werner Stutzel's work on projection pursuit regression in the 1980s represented another leap, providing robust methods for high-dimensional data analysis. These milestones reflect the dynamic and evolving nature of non-parametric regression, showcasing its transition from a basic form of analysis to a sophisticated data-driven approach capable of addressing a wide range of statistical challenges. Now let's discuss some of the fundamental concepts in non-parametric regression. One key distinction between parametric and non-parametric models is that parametric models are based on a predetermined mathematical form, such as linear or polynomial functions. Non-parametric models, on the other hand, do not assume any fixed structure or form for the relationship. They are defined by their flexibility, the adapting to the shape and pattern of the data without being constrained by a predefined equation. That's correct. Non-parametric regression models have a few key characteristics that set them apart. 
First, they offer flexibility, meaning they can adapt to a wide variety of data shapes and structures. Second, they require fewer assumptions about the distribution of variables or the specific form of the relationship between them. Third, non-parametric methods rely heavily on the data itself to determine the model structure, allowing the data to speak for itself. And finally, non-parametric models exhibit robustness, being less sensitive to outliers and able to handle skewed distributions more effectively than parametric models. The mathematical foundations of non-parametric regression involve various techniques and principles. One of these is smoothing, where the model aims to capture the underlying trend in the data without overfitting to noise or outliers. Techniques like kernel smoothing and local polynomial fitting are central to this approach. Kernel smoothing involves placing a function, the kernel, at each data point and averaging these functions to create a smooth curve. The width of the kernel, known as the bandwidth, is crucial in determining the degree of smoothing. On the other hand, local polynomial fitting involves fitting simple models like linear or quadratic functions to subsets of the data. This approach allows the model to change shape according to local variations in the data. Now let's take a look at some of the types of non-parametric regression models. These models form the core of non-parametric regression techniques, and each has its own strengths and is suited for different types of data and analysis scenarios. One type of non-parametric regression is kernel regression. This method uses kernels to create a smooth estimate of the regression function. The choice of kernel and bandwidth are critical in determining the model's effectiveness. Another type of non-parametric regression is splines and smoothing splines. Splines involve dividing the data into segments and fitting polynomial functions to each segment. Smoothing splines extend this concept by adding a penalty term to control the smoothness of the fit. Local polynomial regression, also known as LOS or LOIS, is another important technique in non-parametric regression. It fits polynomials to localized subsets of data, allowing for a flexible fit that can adapt to changes in the relationship across different data regions. Finally, there's k-nearest neighbors. K and N regression, which estimates the response variable based on the closest neighbors in the feature space. It's a simple yet effective technique, particularly useful for nonlinear data. Now let's move on to some practical applications of non-parametric regression. One field where it has become indispensable is financial analysis. Non-parametric regression offers a flexible approach to modeling complex relationships in financial data. It can help analysts identify underlying trends in stock prices or market indices without the constraints of a specific parametric form. This approach allows for a more nuanced understanding of market dynamics, crucial for investment strategies and risk assessment. Environmental modeling is another area where non-parametric regression plays a key role. Its ability to handle non-linear relationships and interact with multiple variables simultaneously makes it particularly useful. For example, splines and smoothing splines are widely used in climate research to model temperature trends and assess the impact of climate change. These methods can effectively handle the seasonal and long-term variations in temperature data, providing a clearer picture of climate trends. Non-parametric regression also has applications in biostatistics and medical research. It's used to analyze complex relationships between biological variables and health outcomes. In epidemiological studies, non-parametric methods are used to understand the relationship between exposure to certain risk factors and the incidence of diseases. In clinical trials, non-parametric regression can be used to analyze the effectiveness of new treatments or drugs, especially when the response to treatment is not uniform across patients. Now let's discuss some advantages and limitations of non-parametric regression. One of the most significant advantages is its flexibility. Non-parametric methods can adapt to a wide variety of data shapes and structures, making them highly versatile. They also require fewer assumptions about the data distribution and can handle complex relationships that parametric models might miss. However, non-parametric methods do come with challenges. One challenge is the complexity of interpretation. The flexibility that allows these methods to model complex relationships also makes the resulting models less intuitive and harder to interpret compared to parametric models. Additionally, non-parametric methods can be computationally intensive, especially techniques like kernel smoothing or local polynomial regression. Another challenge is the risk of overfitting or underfitting. Overfitting occurs when the model becomes too closely tailored to the training data, capturing noise as well as the underlying pattern. Underfitting happens when the model is too simplistic to capture the complexity of the data. Avoiding these issues requires careful model selection and parameter tuning.
When comparing non-parametric methods with parametric approaches, the context and nature of the data play crucial roles. Parametric models are often more suitable for simpler, well-understood relationships where the underlying assumptions hold true. Non-parametric methods excel in scenarios where the data is complex and the relationship between variables is not well understood or highly nonlinear. Now let's talk about the computational aspects of non-parametric regression. Non-parametric regression methods can have higher computational complexity compared to parametric methods. Techniques like kernel smoothing or local polynomial regression can require computations over the entire data set for each prediction, leading to significant processing time especially with large data sets. However, there are ways to implement non-parametric regression efficiently. Proper data preprocessing, such as removing irrelevant features or normalizing the data, can significantly reduce computational load. Tuning parameters like bandwidth or the number of neighbors is crucial for balancing model accuracy and computational efficiency. Leveraging algorithmic improvements like efficient data structures or parallel computing can also reduce computation times. There are several software tools available for non-parametric regression. R is widely regarded for its extensive statistical capabilities, including non-parametric regression. Python is another popular choice, offering libraries like Scikit-Learn for various non-parametric methods. MATLAB and SAS also provide robust support for non-parametric regression. Finally, let's look at recent advances in future trends in non-parametric regression. One area of advancement is in computational efficiency. Algorithms have been developed to tackle the traditionally high computational costs associated with non-parametric methods. Another area is the integration of non-parametric regression with machine learning and AI, creating hybrid models that capitalize on the strengths of both approaches. Looking ahead, the field of non-parametric regression is poised for continued growth and innovation. Future research directions include the development of more sophisticated models for time series and spatial data analysis. The integration of non-parametric methods with emerging technologies like quantum computing could also revolutionize the field, offering unprecedented computational power and efficiency. In terms of applications, non-parametric regression is expected to expand its influence in various domains. In healthcare, personalized medicine and genomics are likely to benefit from these methods, offering more accurate and individualized treatment plans. In environmental science, non-parametric models will continue to play a critical role in modeling and predicting climate change phenomena. As we wrap up, we want to emphasize the growing importance of non-parametric regression in the data-driven world. Its flexibility, adaptability, and ability to capture complex relationships make it an invaluable tool for statistical analysis. We encourage you to delve deeper into the topic and explore specific non-parametric techniques to enhance your understanding. That's it for today. 